If you're a beginner and still need to learn a lot about Premiere Pro, this video is just for you. With the upcoming tricks, you will elevate from level one to a strong independent video editor. Starting with number one, don't drag your clips in the timeline and then remove everything you need. Instead, select it in your project window and on your clip, you will see this little timeline. Use the in and out keys on your keyboard to make a selection from your video. Then drag the selection into the timeline and boom, there you go. Number two. So I accidentally removed this audio clip from the video and now I need to go back and find it all over again. No, instead make sure that clip is selected and hit F on your keyboard. That will make a selection in the source window of that part of your video. Then click and drag the audio icon into the timeline. There you go. It's perfectly synced. Number three. If you press M on your keyboard, you can place markers in the timeline. Very nice. But now when you hold down Alt, you can drag and extend the marker. Cool, right? Now you can also double click it and add some notes to it. Or perhaps you want to change the color of the marker. Everything is possible. Number four, use guides for match cuts. If you want two clips to match perfectly, try using guides. First, make sure the rulers are enabled. Then on the clip of the earth, drag the guides out of it and create a box around it. Now move the playhead to the last frame of the first clip in the timeline and select it. Then in the effect controls, adjust the scale and position so that it fits in the box. There you go, a perfect match cut. Number five, use our beginner's course to learn everything you need to know about Premiere Pro and become a successful video editor. You can take this course in just a few hours and you'll literally skip years of practicing because everything you need to know is right there. Guys, stop wasting time and start chasing your dreams. Oh, and you can also get the beginner and advanced course in one bundle for a much cheaper price, but you gotta act fast. I'll leave a link for you guys down below. Number six, in the effect controls, don't just use the motion properties individually. Just select the motion property and in the program monitor, you can now adjust the scale, position and rotation like it's nothing. There you go. Number seven, add cinematic black bars to your video correctly. To do this, find the transform effect and drag it on your video. Then go back to the effects library and find the crop effect. Then also drop this one on your clip. Now in the effect controls, adjust the top and bottom properties so that these black bars will appear. All right, this is where the transform effect comes in. You can now adjust the position underneath the black bars so that your video will always fit your frame. There you go. Number eight, use adjustment layers to color grade your entire sequence. So to start color grading, head over to the window menu on top and find the Lumetri panel. Then you can adjust the color of the selected clip in here. Now you don't always want to color grade every clip separately. Instead, go to the project window and click the new item button. Then choose adjustment layer. Drag it on top of your video and extend it over the entire sequence. Then make sure it's selected and head back to Lumetri Color. Now everything you do in here will be applied to the adjustment layer and now the color grade will automatically be applied to every clip underneath it. Super simple. Also, back in the timeline, don't forget to play with the opacity of the adjustment layer to blend the color grade even better. Number nine, saving your color grade as a preset. To do that, select the clip with the Lumetri effect applied and go to the effect controls. Then in here, right click the Lumetri effect and choose save preset. Then give it a name and click on OK. It will now be saved in the effect browser under presets and you can easily drag it on your clips. Number 10. Quickly lowering volume of a clip. Don't click and drag this line because that isn't precise. Instead, use the bracket keys on your keyboard to lower or increase the volume by 1 dB. This method is much more precise. Number 11. Using a nested sequence. As you can see, this right here is a sequence. If I double click it, that sequence will open up and all of my clips are inside. You can also select multiple clips and then right click them and choose nest. Now all of these clips are transferred into another sequence, a nested sequence. You can remove it from your timeline and drag it back inside from the project window. And if you double click the nested sequence, that sequence will open up and all your other clips will be visible in here. Number 12. Don't expand your tracks in the timeline like this. Just hold down shift and use your scroll wheel to expand or decrease them all at once. Number 13. To lock all of your tracks simultaneously, hold down shift and click the lock button. There you go. Number 14. If you're having trouble playing back your video in the timeline, go to the sequence menu on top and choose render into out. Let Premiere do its thing and once it's done, boom, your video is playing back perfectly. Number 15. Learn these advanced Premiere Pro tricks in the next lesson. Thank you guys so much for watching.